Welcome everyone to another classy video and I have discovered something about the boost mode setting for gaming on the LG C1 and G1 and want to share it with you all. So the boost mode setting is there to lower the input lag when playing at 60 Hz but it has some other effects as well. So here to start I just want to show the measured brightness in a movie you know, cinema mode is about 755 to 760 nits on this 10% window and then gonna go into game mode so I go to this screen just to hit the black pattern so that the panel will cool off and then when I test in game mode it's pretty much always about 740 so it's a little bit lower so this is gonna take a little bit I didn't want to put any cuts in here that weren't needed so that you can see nothing's being messed with or changed behind the scenes, it's all done in real time and in game mode all the settings are the same nothing's any different, all the AI stuff is turned off and right now the boost mode setting is turned off in the game optimizer menu so some of you have may have seen that enabling boost mode will raise the shadow detail but it actually does a whole lot more than that um, with some caveats and other things, so I'm going to cover all of that in this video tried to make it short as possible but I really wanted to show it in depth so that there's no doubt that everything is as I'm showing. So about to take the measurement here in game mode with boost off. Again it's going to be around 740 nits. So I'm also going to be doing a video pretty soon about brightness measurements, how they should be done and reported, how they there's really no standardization for it and there should be but that'll be a video for the future but so right now just keep in mind movie mode is about 760 game mode boost off is 740 so I think you can see where this is going once I enable boost mode yeah it's gonna go up quite a bit so I don't know the reasoning as to why I can speculate that it's because with boost mode it's disabling some extra processing that may be trying to determine how much brightness it should or shouldn't push and therefore it's just giving it everything and the other part of this is that if VRR is enabled then it doesn't work it doesn't give you that increased brightness so that lends to my theory that if VRR is on it has to do that processing so somewhere maybe in its pipeline or something it's determining that it's supposed to hold back a little energy or whatever for um, efficiency reasoning uh, but with boost mode and VRR off and it's just no processing or at least as minimal processing as possible then it's giving it everything I don't really know uh, but all I know is if VRR is off you're in game mode you turn boost on those are the highest numbers that I can get on this TV and it's not just a 10% window it's across the entire sweep so I'm just gonna run through the numbers very quickly at 100% in game mode is 166 cinema mode is 151 50% window game mode with boost 286 cinema mode 246 25% window game boost 675 cinema 507 18% window, game boost 782, cinema 652. 10% window, 810, cinema 759. 5% window, game boost 823, cinema 772. 2% window, game boost 834, cinema 784. So, and those measurements were done where when you click the button to take a measurement, the meter will take one after a few seconds and then take another one within two seconds and then there's like a pause of about five seconds before it'll do another two measurements again so those measurements were all done on the second click of measurement uh, just so that they were all approximately five seconds of the window being on screen so that it's very consistent so here you can see I made some adjustments and I'm about to go over that uh, in a minute but with the the brightness dropped to 249 and the white stabilizer dropped to 9 from 10. Uh, it helps to keep it a little bit more accurate because Game Boost does mess with a bunch of stuff. So those are the two easy settings I found to put you pretty much 
where you need to be and just wanted to make sure it didn't lose a ton of its brightness it only dropped about 10 nits or so um, but I'm about to pull up patterns to show why I made those changes so this is with game boost turned off and you can see it tracks a little too dark through most of the mid-range and it kind of has some issues but again it's mostly just too dark now here with boost on it's the opposite it's too bright especially if you look at 5 and 10 they're way too bright so here with those slight changes I made you can see it tries to help that bottom end so it's not over lifted too much um, and it tracks pretty much better than on with no change or off so for now those are just quick easy settings if you're going to use boost but again without VRR if you turn VRR on then it's completely different it doesn't give you that extra brightness so here I'm just also testing if it works at different frame rate or refresh rates and so I'm using the Spears and Munzel disc and that's at 24 Hertz and no there's no change at 24 Hertz and I tried on the Xbox forcing 120 but then the patterns just don't work and the HDR doesn't work so there's no way right now to test it at 120 Hertz but we do know the boost mode doesn't do anything at 120 Hertz so it really is only 60 Hertz with VRR disabled that any of this matters so with that said you're probably thinking well then why use it why disable VRR well in my opinion if you're playing a single player story based game that's 60 FPS 60 Hertz and it's all about graphics and how it looks uh, and it has a stable frame rate and you don't have to worry about screen tearing or frame rate dips then you don't need the VRR and then you can just get some extra brightness so why not well I guess the why not would be that then you'd have to go into the settings and change it whenever you play something else at 120 Hertz but again it's just something interesting that I found I find it very interesting that no settings in movie mode can match the brightness of this game optimizer boost setting I, I don't understand why movie mode's being held back from what it could be doing but apparently it is so anyway so here I thought I would just continue to test this in an actual game so here's dirt 5 in photo mode staring at the sun just for a nice bright spot and you can see the difference from boost mode off to boost mode on where we went from 555 up to 625 on that sun so this is also where I verified about VRR disabling it or not allowing that extra brightness as you can see VRR is off right now and then when I enable it and I also did check with FreeSync here and then afterwards I turned off FreeSync and just used regular VRR the same thing it disables it regardless so any form of variable refresh rate you're not going to get the increased brightness from using the boost toggle all right, so you can see we're right back to 555 that brief moment of 690 whatever is just because the menu was up and it messes with the measurement when you do that so again 555 with VRR on with boost on and 555 with VRR off and boost off 625 with VRR turned off and boost mode turned on and again the other thing it does do is it does raise your shadow areas but it does raise them too much and then that's why we dropped the screen brightness by one I did mess with the black stabilizer and tried to do it with that and it wouldn't work it lowered too much into the mid-range and then I also tried the fine-tuned dark areas but that was pointless because you can only do that when VRR is enabled and you're not getting the brightness increase or any of the changes from boost mode with VRR is on so the only thing that I found was just to drop the screen brightness by one and then also the white stabilizer at 10 was measuring too high on the high end so I dropped it to 9 and you saw earlier the measurement looked better um, and then here I'm rechecking without moving anything just to re-verify that boost mode on VRR off is still 625 ish and any other way was 550 555 so I had turned the VRR off and it was on standard so now we put boost 
Again, no cuts, no rushing through it, just an extra verification test. And again, it's low because of having the menu up, but now you can see right back to 620, 625. So if you want to find out some more about this or ask some questions, um, I'm going to be doing a stream on the 14th, Thursday, with Ninjitian AV, and he's been doing some testing into HGIG, and a better way, if you're capable of calibrating your display or having it calibrated, a uh, better way of getting the TV to roll off better than what HGIG does. Uh, but anyway, he'll go into that. Um, so we'll be discussing this as well with boost mode. And then uh, my previous video about the HDR tone mapping and Dolby Vision Cinema versus Cinema Home. If you have any questions about that, come check out the stream and feel free to ask, as well as any other general TV or whatever questions you want to ask. All right, so for this measurement, I applied the screen brightness at 49 and the white stabilizer at 9 instead of 10. And you can see there's really no difference. It's still about 625, so it's not affecting really any measurable difference in game by doing that. Uh, so again, I think if you're playing a game that you know has a good solid frame rate at 60 FPS and it's a single player game, uh, I say use boost mode and turn off the VRR and then uh, experience that little extra brightness. Uh, and then also, I'm going to turn up the ISO here so you can see the shadow detail under this car. And then keep toggling standard and boost and you can see how much darker it is on standard compared to boost. So again, it is a little over brightened compared to what it should be in the darkest of areas with boost mode, even when you drop the screen brightness to 49. But for gaming, I think most people want to see the shadow detail more. I mean, it's uh, it's a tough one. So again, it's a little over brightened compared to what it should be. After finishing this video, I actually thought of something else I should check. And that is, if boost mode is enabled, and you're at 60 hertz, and you enable VRR or FreeSync, what happens? Well, it seems like it just completely disables boost mode if FreeSync or VRR is enabled. Because you're not getting the brightness increase, and you're not getting the change in shadow detail. So, I think VRR and FreeSync just completely negates boost mode altogether at 60 hertz. So it seems boost does not work at 120 or with VRR. So you don't get the lower input lag with VRR. Anyway, back to the video. With boost on, even with dropping the screen brightness to 49. And again, the uh, black adjust did not really do anything to help. Uh, it just kind of made things worse. Um, but you can just see how much darker standard is than boost here. So that pretty much covers boost mode. Um, Kind of surprised that there's not more about this, but I guess it, uh, if you're not really looking into it, you don't own the TV and you're not doing all this testing, then you're not going to see it or notice it. So uh, if you like this video, i appreciate if you could press the like button so more people find it. And I'll catch you in the next one. I hope you all have a good one. Thanks for watching.